from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2019. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Austin. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We're at Pure Accelerate 2019, the fourth annual event, getting bigger and bigger and more customers on theCUBE. Very excited to welcome the CIO of Kensington Swan, Nigel Stevenson. Nigel, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks. Thanks for coming all the way up here, or down here, up here from uh, New Zealand. Give us, our audience, a little bit of an overview of Kensington Swan and specifically about your role as CIO. Sure, Kensington Swan's a uh, uh, top tier law firm in New Zealand. Uh, and actually, we've got a bit of an announcement uh, from last month. We're about to combine with Dentons, which you might know uh, more familiar from a brand kind of perspective, uh, slightly larger than what we are at the moment. Uh, we're uh, a few hundred staff split between two offices in Auckland and Wellington, uh, with a uh, focus on corporate commercial uh, legal practices, so yeah, top tier uh, or high end law expertise. So you've been there about three years. Give us a little bit of a picture of Kensington's IT department, applications, workloads, what's going on there? Yeah, I guess we're pretty similar to, uh, to most law firms or professional services firms actually, you know, similar with uh, the accounting uh, firms as well. The, the, um, the most common tools we use uh, around the, the ERP or the practice management systems that we have, uh, and then production of documents uh, for the, the work that we provide to our clients, maintaining those, uh, keeping them, searching for them, uh, actually, and all the emails and everything else that goes along every single matter that we do. Uh, you know, from a um, uh, compliance perspective, we need to keep all of that and make sure it's safe and sound and, and easily searchable. So big drivers, uh, you, got, you got the clients, you got the lawyers, you got the paralegals, it's this machine running. You got, you know, like you say, confidentiality, yeah. compliance. What are the big drivers in the business that are affecting IT strategy? Uh, I think, um, yeah, especially in the professional services sector, just continue to modernize. Um, we've, we've had systems and, and after the, uh, the last recession, you know, things tightened up a bit for a while and then we've had a, a large push over the last few years to really you know, bring things up to date, bring it, uh, bring it, make it more current uh, and, and relevant to what's out there. You know, with that, we can then bring on other applications and AI and other tools that will really help us to, uh, to drive the business in different directions. Is it the first time you're at Accelerate or? Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk infrastructure. So, yeah. it's, so paint a picture. What's the, What's it look like? You know, you're here. Obviously, you're a pure customer, right? So, what's the storage infrastructure look like? And uh, we've uh, had, I guess, what well, you uh, be a pretty typical infrastructure um, for, for many, many years, uh, with the two data center model, uh, VMware uh, storage servers, and so on, uh, and then replicated across from a DR perspective uh, to the other data center. The um, you know, we've gone through a big decision around where do we go with that? You know, do we take that out to the cloud? Do we keep it on-prem? Do we keep the two data centers one? Where we've ended up uh, deciding this to go with the single production data center uh, based in Auckland, where we've got some DR capability uh, in the Wellington office, but then plan to scale up to the cloud. So we've got enough compute to keep us you know, going, the systems that we've got, but uh, as we grow, we'll move. So you had two replicated data centers essentially, is that right? Yeah. So expensive. Yeah. And then you've essentially now got a main data center, you got some, a little bit of lightweight infrastructure for, for d d DR purposes, is that right? And then yeah, we, we previously essentially had two of everything. Uh, you know, oh, well more than two of everything, but everything we had at the production, we had at the secondary data center. A lot of it sat there um, you know, semi-idle for quite a lot of the time. And as you say, it's quite expensive to have a, a lot of equipment uh, sitting there, you know, not really being used. So moving more to single data center model, uh, replicating some of the infrastructure, but, uh, but then you know, not, a, not the full set as we've ended up. So the decision to stay on-prem versus go all in the cloud, talk to us about some of the business drivers that led you to say we're going to stay on-prem and within that, what elevated pure storage to the obvious choice? Yeah, sure. There's um, there's a lot of benefits of the cloud model, and I think that's really helped. Uh, you know, I guess uh, influence where the on-prem uh, hardware has gone as well. And we'll get to, I guess to get that in a second. You know, with things like the um, the scalability of it, the simplicity, uh, not having to have 
um, you know, very exper uh, experienced uh, storage technicians and, uh, and so on. And I, I think back to my days uh, when I you know, was first in IT and putting together you know, other brands of, uh, of storage, and you know, it was a, a multi-month process, um, you know, certifications after certifications, to, just to be able to plug it together and then configure and code the, uh, the storage array. Um, you know, with the cloud and uh, what we found with Pure is that's just become really simple. You know, within a couple of hours of the array arriving, it was racked, it was turned on, it was uh, cut into uh, the pool and, uh, and presented through to VMware. So yeah. just really, really simple. Oh, the bit twiddling of the past really didn't do much for your business, obviously. But but then you yeah. So you, you chose you chose to stay on prem. Many law firms do just because of the privacy and the confidentiality and yeah. Uh, um, but there's, add some color to that decision. There's a couple of angles to it. The um, uh, first one being performance. You know, we need to make sure that the lawyers get the performance that they need. Um, you know, they uh, charge in six minute increments, like, like most, uh, and if they can't work, then they're not billing, they're not working, they're not providing to their clients, and their clients also want that work done at a, uh, at a good speed and return to them as quickly as possible. And as the world has moved more to that client-centric approach, then, you know, delivering to the clients becomes uh, ultimate and paramount to, to what we do. So performance was definitely key. Um, the economics of it as well. Uh, when we looked at cloud and on a, a price per gig per month with Pure, uh, it worked out very competitive. You know, so it wasn't quite there to, to move into the cloud. Um, New Zealand, uh, we don't have the AWS or Azure database, uh, data centers uh, based in New Zealand. They're all in Australia. So there's a, um, a latency aspect of, uh, of going you know, many thousands of miles across the, under the, or the undersea cables to get to that data. On-prem, it's right there, it's fast, it's connected, uh, and we can definitely perform So you've it. essentially replaced your, sp your spinning disk with flash, is that correct? Yeah. Or? Yeah, so that was one of the other parts of it. You know, um, wanting to get something that was definitely modern and, and set us for the future for you know, quite a number of years. Uh, we didn't look at spinning disk at all. We just went and looked at what flash arrays were available. We have had spinning disks prior, but um, definitely wanted to go all flash. How important was the Evergreen model to you? Is it, is it, how much of it is marketing and how much is it, is it, is it big business impact for you? Uh, it, quite a few other places I've worked, we've hit that, that three year or five year um, uh, you know, support model challenge where all of a sudden the support can hockey stick up and become really, really expensive to carry on the arrays. So one of the other drivers was from an environmental, environmental perspective of, you know, if, if you've got to throw that equipment out after five years, but it's still working fine. Yeah, that's not really great on the environment. So, with the um, and with, from the flash perspective as well as the evergreen, being able to maintain and keep that equipment running and, and going for longer than five years without a sharp uplift in the cost uh, was really really important. So that sustainability was important to you guys. So you before we went live, you mentioned that you guys have been a pure customer since about December of 2018. So about 10 months or so. So those lawyers that are billing every few minutes have to get access to data because the clients are demanding. What's been their reaction to the performance that you're delivering to them? And any correlation with revenue that the business has made because of the decision to stay on-prem? I'll tell you what, the, uh, the best thing about it is they don't complain that things are slow anymore. Uh, you know, uh, so the, you know, they always say in IT, if you're not hearing you know, any issues, then you're doing a good job. And uh, we're definitely in that camp. Uh, you know, the, the systems run that's significantly faster than what they were previously. Uh, and that was on a five-year-old array that was you know, reasonable at the start as well. So yeah, the, the leap forward has been really recognizable uh, from a performance perspective. So, so you don't get the attaboy, but you just don't get the grief. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, it's not very often that people come and say that, uh, you know, with, uh, with accolations in that sense in IT. But, but it sounds like it also simplified your management. You, you described it used to take a long time to you know, provision an array before, and now it's sort of same day or, or part of portion of a day. What have you done with that additional resource? Uh, did you did you riff people? Did you redeploy them? What, what did you now, do? I guess you, you take the same uh, you know, style of if you do move things to the cloud, you know, or any type of outsourcing model, uh, you're essentially just freeing up time, uh, and the staff have got now work on other things, you know, we're slowly moving up the stack on a, a value add uh, perspective of what we deliver, uh, delving more into automation, integration, 
um, you know, digital uh, contract processing, the area that I think we should be working in, rather than you know, tweaking the nuts and bolts. Although you know, that's where I started, so you know, it's, uh, it was a good career path at the time. You know, Oh, go ahead, please. Okay, that's good. Being able to get to that value add is something that we talk with a lot of customers about, and that's absolutely critical about not spending so much time managing something. I want to get my job done. So, a number of announcements came out today. I'm just curious to get your take on, for example, this kind of customer force that Dave and I were talking about with Charlie Giancarlo, their CEO, just a minute ago, about this bridge to hybrid cloud. You, you mentioned an acquisition or a merger coming with Dentons. Yeah. How would something like this hybrid bridge that Pure announced with AWS, how might that be a facilitator of the merger? Or maybe even it's the IT foundation that you've established with Pure that's going to be a great facilitator of that pending yeah. merger. I think uh, one of the slides in the, um, the keynote this morning talked about the on-prem and the cloud world being quite separate, and, and we've found that, and as we've, uh, we've looked, uh, whenever we go out to market, we'll look at both options and take a best of breed approach to, uh, to what we then uh, procure or subscribe to. Uh, we, uh, we've gone into uh, to some cloud solutions. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention brands at all, but, uh, uh, yeah, so we have got cloud. You are from our standpoint, but maybe not from <laughs> your corporate standpoint. Be um, careful. So, um, <laughs> you know, we've got a bit of both, but it has been a bit hard to bridge the two. You know, even even from a backup DR perspective, uh, and then also from scaling the, the on-prem applications into the cloud. Some some things just work better in the cloud, or you know, are better um, architected in the clouds. Especially uh, some remote access solutions, where you know if we've got issues. We want that separate or that air gap between what our systems and uh, and the access for the staff, and, and that's kind of the space that we've uh, we've delved into um, for that. So, being able to join those worlds a lot more seamlessly, and through the same uh, management consoles, and you know, it's just going to make life a lot easier. We'll be able to scale back and forwards so if we can move the data. You know, I mean, actually, I remember years and years ago, you know, talking to storage vendors and saying, well, how come we can't replicate? our data up to a different uh, brand or a different service, in this case, you know, with the uh, adoption or on sort of, of cloud, that's still you know, very prevalent. Yeah, so, I mean, ideally you'd like a common management framework, control plane, data plane, backup framework. Um, is that right? Is that kind of an objective between cloud and on-prem? I mean, it, it definitely it? helps. Yeah, and, and one of the other things that was mentioned in the keynote is around uh, the availability of skilled people. You, know, you think uh, with my generation, I started off in desktop support and then worked my way through infrastructure and project management and team management and so on. Uh, the people coming out of university now don't really have that same career path. They're, they're trying to slot in you know, somewhere up the, uh, the stack. Uh, and a very they start at Python and then work, work yeah, their way and, up. And, right? and they're more in the development <laughs> space rather than the infrastructure space. So the ability to find staff that have the knowledge you know, of the, those systems is, is getting harder and harder. Yeah, so, so the cloud model, the, the almost storage as a service on the on-prem sense, you know, cuts through that, and it means that you don't need those uh, those staff. With the um, the commonality of the tools, that also helps as well. You, know, you don't have to have someone who's spent years and years training in a new solution to be able to then have the confidence to move into it. What are you actually installing from from Pure? Is it is it vial storage, block storage, combination? Uh, we've got the uh, X series arrays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So going for performance, obviously, and because um, yeah. I was thinking in the cloud, you might you might be more interested in an object store because of you know your document heaviness, uh, but it yeah. kind of depends on the merger, I guess, and where you guys go. Yeah, the um, yeah, you mentioned before around there's some uh, data sovereignty concerns around where that data stays, and that's why I think a lot of the, the law firms. Uh, yeah, probably are keeping some of their infrastructure on-prem. Um, so for the sovereignty uh, aspects and performance, you know, if it is there, it's, it is performing. The cloud can perform in, in different ways, uh, you know, but having a bit of both gives you really a good choice. You know, that best of breed model, yeah. So you feel with, with pure storage, you got the foundation as this acquisition and this merger comes forward that everything's in place. You feel pretty confident about that? Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do uh, over the next few months while we uh, adjust what we've got uh, from a software perspective to align with the, the Denton's you know, global uh, software suite. But I'm um, yeah, pretty confident that it can be delivered uh, really well. So what's in the CIO's mind these days? You know, security, cloud, hybrid strategies, alignment with the business, what are your top three? 
I think, uh, like I mentioned before, around really trying to kind of lift what we do to deliver value to the business. You know, um, it depends on what type of business it is, but you know, IT can be seen as a cost center. We really want to be able to be more involved in, uh, in what, the, in our case, the lawyers are doing. Uh, you know, the, the main project that we've got on at the moment is automating legal processes, not to replace any people, but to augment what they do uh, and to provide them better tools, more efficient tools, tools that, uh, that the younger lawyers, when they come in, can follow their way through and learn you know, what that process is, but also overlaying the, uh, the legal aspects around that as well. So it's, it's not just an online form, it's a, it's a training guide, it's, it's everything you know, for each of those processes that are we you, do. Are you deploying any machine learning, artificial intelligence, machine intelligence in, in that regard yet? Is it kind of too We early? haven't quite got there. Uh, it's definitely on the list. You know, some of the things uh, that we'd like to, to look at is things like uh, machine readable uh, software to go through documents, pull out snippets. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, uh, lawyers will spend, they have to read through a lot of material, find key bits of information, and extract that to then use within the documents that we produce. You know, even in, in simpler processes, uh, you know, they're still doing that. They loan from the real uh, complex, you know, five, 600 page construction contracts. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot that we could potentially help to, to find that information for them. Uh, when it comes into things like e-discovery for litigation, uh, in the old days, you know, they'd wheel in a, you know, a truckload of, uh, of paper file boxes. You guys must have loved that. Like oh. you say, you're billing at six minute increments. Now, that, now <laughs> we get you know, a hard drive with terabytes of data. Yeah. And we've got to troll through all of that. And that, there's some real space that, that good AI tools can help cut through that you know, significantly faster than uh, your standard kind of funnel based search tools. Do you think do you think software robots have a place, like robotic process automation, or is it kind of? Uh, I think um, where we're going with it is uh, the RPA will kind of fit in between the human process. Uh -huh. You know, we're mapping out it more from a, um, a business process perspective, where there's going to be some educational steps, some human steps, some RPA steps, uh, and it'll eventually get through to to an outcome of uh, of delivering what the the lawyers need for the clients. So, last question is, is for, that I have is. You know, when we, when, we, when, we, when we do all these shows, we do like 100 events a year, everybody, you know, the, the vendors tell you how great they are, and so we always like to ask the practitioners, your experience with Pure relative to other, you know, stores, you don't have to name names, but just, is it substantively different? How much, I guess, I, I ask you again, how much is marketing versus substantive business value for you as a practitioner? Yeah, uh, so we've only had the array since uh, December. Um, one of the things, I did a case study for Pure just recently, and one of the things I highlighted in there was the support. Uh, you know, when you go on to a new vendor or choose any, any different path, you, you're taking that kind of risk and the step into the unknown. Um, we did have an issue uh, a few weeks after we put the first array in, uh, and they came in during Christmas break where we were all uh, off, and in our case at the beach, <laughs> yeah, which is a bit different uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, but they came in flawlessly, sorted the issue out, got it back working, you know, without us really having to do anything apart from letting them in the building. Uh, and that really gives us confidence in what they do, how they uh, can deliver for going forward, you know. And I think there's a lot of value in, in sharing that these things don't always go very smoothly, but you need to have yeah. established that relationship with that partner that can be rapidly deployed to help. Because ultimately, I'm sure those lawyers either want to start billing every three minutes, or they want to be able to build more every six minutes. So never a dull moment, Nigel, in your role. But we thank you so much for joining Dave and me on theCUBE. And maybe next year we'll be talking about how AI is helping, hopefully, clients achieve better hopefully. results. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.